You know, I was sitting back there and reading that saying, who's that guy talking about? <laughs> hey, you know. Uh, so, uh, hey, great to be here today. Uh, my second opportunity, my second time in the state. Uh, I, you know, it's real rare that I, I get an opportunity to uh, visit both wings mm -hmm. in the state because you know, I travel quite a bit. And, you know, the goal is to try to get out to all the 50 states, three, ter uh, three territories in the one district that we have in our Air National Guard. As NCOs, we need to make decisions. That's how we make decisions quicker to make a change to be effected on that mission. As I go around to the different wings, I'm talking to senior NCOs, and I'm challenging them to allow that airman at the lowest level, that NCO at the lowest level, make a decision to get the mission done. Because we got to speed things up to accelerate that gap. But I think it's most important if I can go to this airman right here, and I got that performance feedback saying, hey, Let's sit down and get a game plan and what you want to do in the future. You know, hey, this is the roadmap. Will that roadmap work for you? What's your goals? What's your desires? Let's plan this out. You know, get old um, we can't, there's not enough policy for me to change. I can't have policy bad leadership. So a question I had was from the pivotal change from missions that the guard units had across the country and just in the airports in general. Uh, speaking to the senior NCOs that explained how the mission worked when they were back in you know, your guys' tip. Uh, so back so when we did, huh? Exactly. I know I'm older than. <laughs> what are some future missions you envision for the guard for the guardians that we exist? Each branch of service exists for the same thing. The mission statement for the Air Force. It's fly, fight, win. Air power anywhere, anytime. The Army is to deploy, fight, and win. Win our nation's war. Let you know. Number one, desire for job security. Number two, resistance to change. And number three, lack of self-worth. Those are the three things why people will not empower those below it. The people in our country have the privilege to wear this uniform. We secure the nation for the other 99%. Between the ages of 18 and 24, less than 10% of people even qualify to wear this uniform. And then that shrinks down to about five percent. One of those four foundational competencies, we have 22 attributes. And six of those qualities came from those, out of those 22 attributes. And one of the hardest mission sets now in cyber, based on, I use that term adversaries, and what's going on today. Because we gotta focus on the cyber warfare based on our adversaries. You know, what we see on the news, the, like I mentioned, the Colonial Pipeline, the meat process, those are just small things that we just hit the news, but there's something British is going on all the time. Things that just, that we can't wait before it hit, you know, the major headline. Constantly. So the focus will be more on South Intel, because we're creating this new do domain, they call it, Anybody heard of Jazzy 2? Joint all, the, all Domain Command and Control. And what that Joint All Domain Command and Control is that each branch of service is able, able to communicate within in command and control. Meaning that everybody can see the same thing on the ground. They can see the aircraft, they can see troops on the ground. So the Air Force we will contribute to that system. It's called ABMS, Advanced Battle Management System. The three big services, the Army, the Air Force, and the Navy, will contribute our systems to build this one system to, so we can have, as a DOD, command and control. For, just give you an example. Currently, right now, 
Get about it for me with our tapis. And then they come here and they bring their expertise with them to um, from there. Our senior medic, so Sergeant LaViolette is one of our um, search and extraction medics, so she would provide any life-saving interventions that she can do on the footprint. We then triage those patients mm -hmm. to see who takes highest priority, get them decontaminated from any seabird and debris that's still on them, and then we bring them in here. Okay. They're in here for about 15 to 30 minutes. Um, in all These folks got them spun up for the deployment. Um, when it was, as you can tell from the video, it was a joint mission. Uh, the Army here in, in the state is, is much larger than we are. So we had, uh, under the joint mission, 200 Army uh, folks and uh, medical folks and um, 40 air medical. Some of these were not medical folks, but we trained them up to be uh, medical folks. Whether are going to break. Okay. All right. Good, good, good. Hey, just... Um one of the things I want you to think about, I've answered my nation's call. You're, you're answering your nation's call. And things like that, that you really touch lives and change things. You know, I was at one state and I was talking to um, a major, and uh, it was me and General Lowe, and he was actually saying, So, Major, uh, tell me a little bit about the background she was taking place. She said it was an older gentleman that she was standing there with, uh, that passed away, and she called, she had to get some more information uh, two weeks later, and she called. We have, you know, in the Air National Guard, we have 108,000 and 100 airmen. Currently, right now, we have approximately 88,000 that's had either had the first shot or the second shot. So we're constantly moving the ball down the field to make sure as an enterprise that we stay go down and on January 20th, we, as I said, we had over 26,000 soldiers and airmen at our nation's capital to let history continue to prevail, do a transition of power from one commanding chief to the other. That's additionally what you're doing. You know, as I was out there walking and talking with Aaron and some, some Aaron and soldiers, you know, as they've been down there, they've been standing a little while, how things happen. This right here shows that profession that you're in that makes things change. By what you're doing, change the, changes the community and how they perceive this year. They look at it now and they see it, they look at it as a lifeline that came in within the community and saved them. So it's important that you understand how important you are, not only to the station, state, but the entire nation. You know, and as a National Guard, we've been doing it since 1636. And that's what the starting point is, right? Be with you and you providing information to me to see what you do within your career field. You know, like I say, many of you, as I told the staff sergeant, is that multi-capable airmen that make us unique as National Guardsmen. And sir, hey, every organization builds their culture around the leadership. And based on your compassion and how you feel, that's what helped build this culture. You know, as I said over there in the other room, and I'll say it again, um, People don't leave organization, people leave people. And if you keep that culture good, people will remain with you. People will follow you through that wall, wall once that trust is built. But through that culture, you build that trust. You show them that you care about them. And they seen that in how you exhibit yourself is showing that you care about them and that's how you're so emotional about the, what they're doing in the field because they are taking that within themselves and express it to all of those that they touch. And that's what makes things a difference.